Hi guys, in this video I share with you how we saved and preserved our broccoli we got with the Easter event. So here in the UK, the week before Easter, um, a lot of the supermarkets decided to drop some of the prices of their veg and we decided that we would go and grab some while it was on the cheap and we picked up five heads of broccoli um, for 15p each. As you can see when we got them home we decanted them immediately. This is literally about half an hour after we walked in the door and we popped them into these totes. Now these totes were being kept in the coolest part of our home and there was no reason to have them in the fridge because we did have enough veg that we didn't have enough freezer fridge space at the time. As you can see we've just noticed that one of the broccoli we picked up literally started going off before we got it home. Before we got it home. Now I'm very careful when I'm picking up cheap veg or um, you know not at its best veg to pick up stuff that isn't going really off off and we did all of them were green until we got them home literally until we got them home which meant that on Easter Sunday which was the very next day I spent my day prepping veg for preservation uh, instead of sitting on the couch stuffing my face full of chocolate eggs because you know it's chocolate egg day <laughs> now I don't know about you but when I see that my broccoli the very next day had gone even worse and this is like 12 hours later I honestly could not believe it I couldn't believe it even the best best one was already going yellow and it shouldn't have been but I was determined at this point I was going to use every single bit of this broccoli. That it didn't matter. All of it was going to get used because I wasn't going to waste it at all. So first off, uh, I separated the florets from the stalks. And as you can see, I'm putting the stalks to the side because I'm going to keep them. Now I make my florets a little bit bigger. Um, because the plan was to freeze them which you know I did and I will be going through that process with you from go to woe um, because that was the quickest method of getting them preserved now on this particular day on Easter Tani and I had already um, organized to be um, making a roast lamb dinner <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we hadn't really planned on doing anything else so our entire stove and oven was taken up so we had to find a way to that I could get these prepped up in a way that they were going to last long enough that we were going to be able to preserve them so I prepped them all up ready for immediate use but put them in the fridge as you can see this is not a process that really takes a very long time uh, people do say that you know it's the prepping of the veg takes ages and the whole point of what I'm doing in these this small series of videos is actually showing you it doesn't take as long as you think it takes to prep the veg and yes okay I am an ex-chef but I don't work at the same speed that I used to anywhere near. What I do find though is jobs like this do kind of keep my hand in, keep my skills up and give me good practice because you know if you don't lose it, use it, you lose it. Now the reason that I did the florets quite large is it gave me a bigger scope for what to do with them. I did, like I said, I did want to freeze them uh, and I didn't want them being very, very small florets because otherwise they do turn to mush between the blanching process, the freezing process and the defrosting process when you're using them. 
Now, as you can see here, I am trimming the ends of the broccoli stalks. I am fully prepared to use these and I was sitting here trying to decide what I was going to do with them and I was looking at the beans at the same time because as you saw from another video on the beans video they were going off at the very same time and we had to deal with those as well so in a moment you will see what I did with them or rather later on in the video you'll see what I did with them <laughs> As you can see I am cutting these into quite large sticks and that gives me more scope for use and better options for preservation. If I cut these down into small chunks I would probably only be able to freeze them or turn them into a soup as otherwise they would turn to a mush like consistency and there's nothing worse than mushy broccoli. It has put people off eating broccoli for generations okay and I'm not having that in my house so at the end of all of the prepping up of the broccoli it will have taken me a grand total of around six minutes to prep up five heads of broccoli which isn't very long it's really really not long and we've been sitting here having a really nice chat and a brew together that whole time now one of the things I do when I have jobs like this to do is I will stick on a movie or stick on YouTube, I will stick on something and just have it going. If you want to just listen to music, listen to music. It keeps you company, it helps keep you going, you know, and it just passes the time. It goes very, very quickly. Not that it takes a lot of time because it really, really doesn't. It's amazing what you can do in the time. You just got to make use of it. So there you go. There's our florets, there's our stalks all done. And yeah, like I said, a grand total of just under six minutes to do the lot. So it's the next day, it's Monday, and I'm heating up a pot of water on the stove. I also have a tub of water, cold water, and a colander at the ready at the site. Now once my pot of water comes to the boil, I get to drop in my broccoli. But yeah, okay, I started doing a piece at a time. I was worried about the splashback, but while I kept the tub between me and the water, I was all good. <laughs> get in there. So people do say that it needs to come to the boil again and you know, you cook it for a minute after that to blanch it. No, you don't. When it comes to greens, all you need to do is watch for the color to change and go slightly brighter, which honestly doesn't take that long and it probably takes about a minute and a half in the water at that temperature once you've dropped it in. Once you've done that, you want to get it as fast out of that hot water as possible to stop the, the um, cooking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump it in that tub of water that we've now added ice to to get it to cool off as fast as we possibly can because if it continues to cook when it goes into the freezer and then you go to defrost it you'll have broccoli mush. No, nah, we're not doing that. Now honestly the longest time that is taken to do this process really is done by things other than you so that's the boiling of the water and the freezing of the broccoli these are things you know that will take the longest time but they don't have to take up your time so far we've taken up about nine minutes of our actual time and that's in total in total completely of what you've had to do so uh, at this point we're just going to put these out of here and straight into the colander because we're getting set up to do another batch of um, other veg and we want to get these out as soon as possible because we do want to get these draining because we don't want to have all of that water on them to start the freezing process. If you do end up with having a lot of water on your broccoli before you start the freezing process, 
what will happen is that you are more likely to get things like freezer burn or excess ice build up etc and we don't want that what we want is some beautifully frozen broccoli that is going to be lovely and separate and easily brought out of a bag in the amounts that you want not having to defrost an entire bag what we're going to do with this broccoli is we're going to place it onto baking trays just so that we can get a single layer now the reason for this is so that they freeze separately and don't clump together because when you put them in your bag sometimes you'll only want a couple of pieces of broccoli you won't want an entire bag of broccoli so let's make it easy for ourselves and freeze it in a way that we can do exactly that without having 30 bags in the freezer so with the broccoli i'm a little bit more careful and i want to make sure that they're not really touching touching because they will actually interact with each other and if you try to pull them apart you could break the other florets which means that you're going to get bitty bits and nobody wants bitty bits especially if you're trying to do things like stir fries and stuff like that which you can do with this frozen broccoli without a problem now once that's done these trays head to the freezer and normally i would put one tray on top of the other however with the um, broccoli I don't want to do that I'm so I'm putting one tray in here and one in my other freezer until it's all frozen. While those are freezing I'm going to deal with the broccoli stalks now first off we're going to start off with a litre of filtered or boiled and cooled water or distilled water whatever you want to use right just not straight out of the tap water then I'm going to get a couple of tablespoons of the salt, Celtic salt because I prefer Celtic salt personally and I have a little bit of it normal sea salt will do though just mix it up and make sure that it's all um, dissolved in that water this process will help you um, later on down the track as it's fermenting and it's only going to take you a couple of seconds to do it. Let's be honest, it really doesn't take long at all. It also turns out that on this particular day every man and this dog was trying to make as much noise as possible outside my house. But you know that's life and it happens so apologies for the electronic whirring noises and banging noises and roofing scaffolding guy noises but you know that's life now we're going to start layering our ingredients into our pickle jar and i'm going to start off with some of the broccoli stalks that we made the other day and just pop a few of those in first good couple of handfuls this pickle jar I got is otherwise known as a kimchi jar, etc. I found this one on Timu. No, I'm not sponsored, I'm not affiliated. But that's where I got all my pickle jars because I've got five for the price of one and I, there's nothing wrong with them. These are directly from the manufacturers. So next I'm cutting my spring onions in half. And I'm going to pop a good layer of those in there as well because yum you can't go wrong with a bit of spring onion yum so yeah I am putting a little bit more in because I want to have nice big thick layers at the bottom and you just want to shake it down a little bit just to get them to layer up a bit Put half your garlic in now i'm going to get some strips of the lemon peel and we're going to put those in as well we're just using the zest part not as much of the pith part you know because ew now normally 
you, you, you could probably use dill for this if you've got fresh dill use dill I don't have any dill I've got no dill seeds I'm completely out of dill entirely until I grow some this year so I added some fennel seeds instead and they work just as well now I am now going to use some of my beans my flat runner beans and I'm going to add these in also now these can be a little bit long so if they are a bit long then just cut them in half you're right there's nothing wrong with it it's not going to change anything it's just going to make it easier to layer them up in the in the jar at the end of the day and it makes it easier getting the stuff out because you know sometimes you can get things in and then you can't get them out again i mean i would love dearly to have bigger jars than this but um this is what we've got because the bigger jars you can actually put your whole hand in I can't do that with these but that's okay these fit nicely on my shelf and they look pretty so it's all good now we've got pretty much the whole jar done but right now we need to start doing another layer of everything so we're going to put a few more of the broccoli stalks in you want this to be as packed as possible okay the more packed it is the more pickle you're going to get and the better the ferment's going to be it may take a little bit longer but you know what there's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that so we go broccoli it's amazing how much these things actually hold as well to be fair not gonna lie so I didn't quite manage to get all my broccoli stalks in this pickle jar, but you know what? They go really well with hummus, just on their own. I'm just saying. So on top of our broccoli stalks, again, we've got the rest of the spring onions. And we're going to add a few more beans. Now, once this is done, in this particular pot, pickle jar we I'm going to explain a little bit more later on uh, I should just shut up because I'm confusing myself now <sighs> just get your extra beans in okay and just make sure that they are there's nothing poking upwards what we want is everything lying down so if it's lying down then it can't be poking up because you need to have all of that veg and all of those ingredients underneath any liquid it's really important really important oh, I've got quite a few beans in there just quietly oh yeah and those beans also they go really well with hummus ask me how I know yep 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 it was good really good if you don't have a fermenting pot like this one you can use just a normal jar with a lid but you are going to have to burp it and in the first few days you're going to have to release that lid at least two or three times a day otherwise it's going to explode because of the build up of the gases okay I prefer these because then I can just pretty much leave them alone you do have to be a little bit careful about the moat um, which is the water lock at the top um, you do need that water will evaporate there are two ways that you can deal with this either you can use white vinegar at the top which also some of that liquid will evaporate you still need to keep an eye on it but you if as long as you check them daily take two minutes just have a look see where the water levels at and check it otherwise if that water goes away it's no longer sealed and your pickles are finished so as I said before you need to make sure that absolutely everything is rammed as far as it will go in that pickle jar and just add a few a few more of your um, flavorings at the top so a little bit more of the lemon peel a little bit more of the garlic a little bit more of the fennel seeds you know or the dill whatever you're using can go up the top without problem then what you want to do is you want to top up your fluids now this water needs to go all the way over to the top over the top of the veg okay now obviously I don't have enough here I'm gonna have to get some more and that's okay Now also at the end here I do add a couple of black peppercorns, in fact I add about half a dozen black peppercorns whole at the end. I don't layer those in, I don't want it to be particularly spicy hot, what I do want is them to lend their flavour so you get a little bit of peppery warmth 
but I do not do not want them to be really really spicy pickles because it'd be really nice if I can get Tani to try these now I am aware that there's garlic in there but it's he doesn't have to eat it and the fumes are not going to be especially um, reactive for him because they will be fermented not cooked now he does seem to be more of a mood for experimentally trying new things at the moment so if I can get him to try some of these as pickled broccoli and you know beans he may just go for it so here we have our beautiful jar of pickled broccoli and beans broccoli stalks and beans and it, this is an amazing way can I just say to use up those broccoli stalks so you're not wasting them any other way that I would use them would possibly just be to make soup broccoli and cheese soup maybe sometime or chop them up freeze them and stick them in stir fries now this is all my other little jars I've got a few of them as you can see really good part about making all this stuff yourself and buying the veg in cheap or the fruit in cheap or whatever you're doing is that you get to experiment in different ways of preserving your food in the way that you would probably like the taste of it and you know because it's so cheap you're not going to cry if it's wasted and you don't like it just always make sure to make a small amount if you're not sure about it that way you can try it and if you like it you can make some more it's not a problem we do that a lot now if you've really enjoyed this video guys please do give it a thumbs up leave me a comment down below if you try anything or have any questions etc and i will see you guys again next time have a really good rest of your week bye